So you may have seen my other videos where I talked about the rather controversial FX8350 CPU, the poster child of the AMD FX series of CPUs, and a CPU I've personally owned and played games for for years. And, like I said before, it's definitely one of the most underrated CPUs ever. But a lot of you wanted me to cover exactly how well the CPU performs in just gaming in general, in 1080p and 1440p as well, because those are way more dependent on the CPU. And also let's cover some other stuff like Cinebench while we're at it, because well, why not? So, I put my FX8350 together with my GTX 1080Ti to present you exactly what kind of performance you can expect. And I've used this very graph that I've made a while back against people all the time who just claim that the FX8350 is just absolute rubbish. Well, as you're about to see, it isn't. If you're playing at just 1080p with a 144Hz refresh rate monitor, which is kind of the standard nowadays, as you can see, the FX8350 easily reaches that. So, you have no problems playing at a smooth 144fps there. At 1440p, there's barely any change, and you can still play comfortably at a high refreshing monitor. And at 4K, like I said before, there's absolutely no change. So, if you want to get a cheap 4K gaming PC, this is definitely a CPU to go for. And now, for a game with way better graphics, let's talk about Shadow of the Tomb Raider, where, with just an FX8350, a CPU from 2012, you can play 60 FPS at 1080p in Shadow Tomb Raider at max settings with you know RTX off of course. But to top it all off, even at 1440p you can expect a smooth 60 FPS roughly gaming experience. Now let's talk about some places where the CPU does take a bit of a beating. Primarily in Time Spy where even though overall it's not too far behind, in just the CPU test it suffers dramatically as you can see. So as you can probably figure out by now, for anything that's just CPU intensive, it may not be the best choice, but when you need a good CPU GPU combo, it does become quite a good solution. And in Time Spy Extreme, we also see be completely beaten out, but thankfully with our GTX 80i, we are still seeing decent performance. And now let's talk about Cinebench where, uh, yeah, again, Computing scenarios aren't the highlight of this CPU, as you can tell clearly. But hopefully through these graphs you can see how, if you're on a really good game PC, you can easily just get this, and you can invest way more into a better graphics card to have an amazing experience. As long as you're not getting something way out of this league, so you're not bottlenecking, you're gonna have a great time. And if you want me to make more videos about hardware and testing hardware like the FX8450 CPU, then I highly recommend checking me out on Patreon. Even $1 a month goes a long way in helping me make way more interesting content, way better content, and content on way weirder and fun topics. Also, I'd like to thank my Patreon Barry all for supporting the channel. Thank you ever so, so much. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to subscribe, like, whatever. And I'll see you all in what I make next. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye.